is this going to be a trade that goes to 100? I would say that my number of losses is less. That being said, when they're losses, they can be much more. I think that there's a very good case here for GOAT being called the first AI money. I just feel like it's got that enough momentum about it. So I think it can keep going. Any meme coin chat, they're always like, oh, this guy's sold to buy X new token. You know, what a loser. I've been in so many chats where you just see that you've got to be, okay, they might sell, but someone's always going to want to buy it because it's always got like a bit of a, this is a unique narrative. What is going on, everybody? We're back again for another episode of the Super Cycle Show, and we got a special guest for you today. The man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Duck to a buck. We got Manda. What is going on, my friend? How are you today? Dude, great to be here. Uh, I'm glad you two have finally uh, gone, the, gone the distance and got a show together. Um, I follow you guys consistently on, on the timelines, um, particularly, uh, well, I follow you, Clemente, because I like how you give out your public calls, but I've been following Easy for a long time for his calls, so I'm, I'm super, super glad to be on the show with you guys. No, we're very excited to have you. I'm very excited for the conversation today. There's a lot to cover. A meme coin founder, the man who, in conjunction with OSF, dumped seven figures of board apes in one transaction, one click, which, oh. absolutely electric move. Shout out Machi for providing the liquidity on that one. But uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting conversation. So let's just dive right into it. Mando, first things first, what are your thoughts on meme coins? I'm like all high in. High level. Okay. I'm all in. Um, I would say right now, as of the middle of September, I was pretty defensive from about May to September. And then from about September, meme coins are probably about 60% of my portfolio right now. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah, I've gone all in for it, for this, for this move. Um so, uh, I, and, but, but I'm more swing trading. Like I'm not sitting yep. here buying, um, like, you know, I, I'm not the guy who's, who's got a filter on bull X every, I mean, I'd have that, but that's not generally what I'm looking for. I'll do that for like the, the gambling side of stuff. But if I'm looking for 10 X plays from September to, um, to December, that's, the, I just felt like meme coins are going to be the easiest spot. I like that. And see, what that do you, is what do you like? So what changed? Because you were uh you and OSF were both early uh callers to uh whiff, right? Dog whiff hat. You were early mm. on that and you were bull posting it. Um obviously we saw kind of the, the Pico top or a little bit of a, a top in the meme coin uh, uh ecosystem in late March ish, right? When Bitcoin kind of topped out. Um, and then you said you kind of flip bearish from May to September. What's changed? Is it pretty much just the majors price action? Is that what you look for when when trying to find the momentum in the meme coin uh, ecosystem? Yeah, I don't really know what it was at that time. I just felt as though around that time, Pump Fund came out. And because I'm more of a swing trader, like I said, I, I tried to look for gains like that. Um, I was seeing less of that. It was more just like a churn of coins. And um, it was just that new dynamic, I think changed a lot of my like meme coin investing. And we, we've really been early to Pepe. Pepe was the one that we were really early for, which I think a lot of NFT people were kind of early to, um, off the back of just being involved in NFTs. And then that just kind of naturally happened. And then we were early to whiff, although I kind of exited that, um, much earlier than OSF. I, I, I kept Pepe all the way. Um, but, uh, but whiff was, was more an OSF trade, but yeah, I just felt at that time the dynamic for meme coins slightly changed, and it just became difficult to own multi hundreds of million dollar or billion plus meme coins. Like I just didn't really see a world where like Whiff or Pepe or some of these other ones would would go to like the tens of um, tens of billions just because of what was happening there. And you could see it. Like if anyone was in meme coin like group chats over that time, like last year you'd have like one or two coins a week which maybe a group chat would try and like, oh yeah, like the Pepe chat would be like, oh, there's this new coin, let's have a look at it. I've been, I've been in group chats for like one coin, coin A, and they'd be like calling about 50 other co uh, coins in those group chats every day. And you could just tell that like people weren't holding on to the coin A. They were like, mm -mm. and it just felt as though that was a change. So I, I went more defensive there. Just I, I went to JLP, which I, I, I think I spoke with you about for a long time, yep. easy. That was like 100% of my portfolio from from um late april to to september and then i didn't really catch the murad thing at all like i have to admit like i didn't see that coming back as strong but i did um start to layer into a number of different meme coins and just straight bitcoin uh from from uh so i moved that jlp position into meme coins and bitcoin from from september but not like to be none of them were really murad memes apart from mog 
Okay. Okay. And that was kind of my next thing there would be like, so you moved into about 60% your port mm. into meme coins. What coins are you kind of like swing trading? Because I did a similar move that wasn't 60%, but I took 10K and I'm like, I'm going to hold this through December 31st. That's the date. Bought nine coins, three over 100 mil, three from one or from 10 to 100 mil and three under 10 mil. And I allocated varying levels of capital, two grand to the top ones, 1K to the middle ones, and then allocated uh, $333, so 1,000 total to the bottom three. It's Giga, Mog, and Mumu as the top. Aura, Harambe, lock in in the middle, and then Kobe, Stan, and Dev as my like high risk gambles, basically. Yeah. And what's crazy is lock in and Kobe are the two that have outperformed everything. Lock in over 2x, Kobe over 2x as well. Yeah. We can get into that now because I think the dynamic is maybe slightly shifted. But at the time, I bought mainly, um, I bought mainly Mog. I also bought Fog in in, in OK size, and I what had. What market cap did you get in Fog at? Um, just shy of a hundred. Um, okay. And then and then I got into uh, Retardio. I, I just like nice. felt like that was like a Mog on Solana style coin. Yeah. Um, I only ask about Fog because I have a special place in my heart for it. Uh, I call in the Bodagos Discord. I shared this to the whales at about fifteen mil, and I was like, yes. "This is going to a hundred, no hesitation." Hearing about rumblings of who was backing and behind it, the connections they had to exchanges, seeing it at four hundred completely shocked me. I thought it would have topped at three hundred mil. There's some loose ties to Popcat, so my thesis was always it's going to be twenty five percent of Popcat. It was like the, yep. the the theoretical bet for me. It's been a crazy move, um, but to be fair. I am now largely out of both of those coins. Um, Fog, I still have a small, smallish, but Retardia, I'm almost, almost totally out. Um, and now my biggest positions are are Goat and Mudang, actually. Um, Interesting. Yeah, uh, and that's kind of it. <laughs> uh, Goat, Mudang, and obviously I'm involved in Epic and Mog. I still have my Mog back. So okay, those are the three. Um, and the reason was I just kind of felt like, uh, for me, for Go, I just felt like it was a, it was a new meta, and I think I felt like that one can keep on going. It's, it's got enough mm -hmm. about it that it can be called an AI coin. Funds, interestingly, like are, I think, can invest in it because it's got it's not like a cute animal JPEG. Like if you if you're a liquid token fund that's missed the whole of this move up, I think they can tell their LPs, look, we're going to invest in this thing. And then Mooding was just the volume, like. The, yeah. when they got that perp listing um and that's more recent position it, it's doing perp volumes over a billion dollars a day i haven't seen a coin at 100 to 100 to 200 million dollar market cap do that since pepe um pepe used to do that like when pepe went below 100 million people forget that like there was a yeah. brief period where like it just died when the bet the dev was selling or all that sort of stuff but it was still doing like 500 million to a billion dollar of perp volume every single day. And Mudang's doing the same. It's done, it did a billion and a half of perp volume yesterday. It's done Crazy. that pretty much every single, I mean, I think the lows is like 500 million of perp volume, which is still 300, but like it does 500 to $2 billion of perp volume every day. With did that for a small period and then Pepe did, bit it. So I, I just feel like that one is, this is how I always look at these coins is like, are they going to die or not? And if they're not, What's the upside? And I kind of felt like when it was trading at 130 to 150 a few days ago, I was like, this thing can't die. This thing isn't going to go below 100 if it's doing $1.5 billion of per volume. And then um, the GOAT one I've had since pretty early. I just felt like that was um, a, a decent, decent. I like one. the narrative thesis on it. The AI side of things is interesting because that's like where a lot of people are speculating the market goes is like AI and gaming is like the two big bets and narratives for like the next phase. Mm -hmm. Um, so that makes sense to me. The Moodang position is interesting because I longed the Binance listing. Right. And I shorted the GOAT Binance listing just because of how they got listed. GOAT got listed at all-time high. So it provides yeah. like a, a leg up liquidity exit for a lot of people. Moodang getting listed at near its like relatively lows means that its net new participants can now leverage into it. So like that was kind of the thesis on it. But like I'm curious what your thoughts are on Moodang and what makes you like – what market caps do you look at when it comes to coins? So I guess I, I I mean I do gamble on new methods, right? Like I, I I'm I'm normally paying attention. To be fair, I'm not normally paying attention below one million dollars. Like I'll normally pick on something around a million, and I'll try and see like is this a one to twenty million play? Is this a one to a hundred million play? Um, 
and obviously once they sometimes get above one million they can go really parabolic and they can just go to like 20 straight away so sometimes you do I, I i'm not often like super early though i'm yeah. not like i'll buy it on the day you know rather than like um in the first second but generally i'll just my filter has always been have i seen this before like has this is this the first in a meta and um go definitely touched upon that and then mooding i kind of felt like did as well like for three weeks it was only animals on tiktok or at random zoos around the world and you still see that now so and it felt like a real normie coin like one thing i disagree with with with, with murad and some of these coins right now is that they all feel i think they're starting to get in each other's way a little bit like there's quite a lot of you know you can't really flip popcat so popcat has to go up for spx to go up and Mog can't really go that much higher than, let's say, SBX. So they kind of all in each other's ways in the hundreds of millions. And after you start to see like some big sellers coming out and things like take a Bitcoin and a couple of others, I think just people, I, I can imagine the runners that you've seen over the last month, they haven't actually been, um, yeah, SBX has had, a, has, has had a good performance, but Fog is not a, Fog is not a Murad coin. No. Um, Goat was not a Murad coin. No. Um, Sigma was not a was Mew. Mew? No. Mew, Mew wasn't either. But what I'm trying to say is it's these coins that are not on his list, which I'm seeing yeah. run most. Um, I think that's spot on too. Because like I look at the Murad list and his thesis is like long-term conviction hold, which usually means more steady grind up versus yeah. new narrative being formed. Like Fog is the artist meta. Like it's just a frog, you know? And tr like got him talk to bag a little bit. I own Earl too. And right. that one that's gotten interesting because no one knows what it is, but the 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 like the motto for it is it's got legs, which to me is yeah. like then like those sayings are what really trigger me is like if it's a saying that expands outside of crypto, then it becomes more inherently interesting. Oh, I'm locked in. Like that is like the easiest saying that you could possibly imagine that every person says. It makes sense. Locked in is now a hundred million dollar market cap. The last two days it's up forty five percent. On the last two daily candles, 25 each. It's like stupid volume on this thing too for a meme coin like this. But then Earl, like it's got legs. And someone's like, oh, that thing's got legs. Like they talk sports gambling. When the when the parlay's got legs, people say it. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is that's the saying for it. I think I think obviously these sort of sayings obviously carry like meme coins. That's that's for certain. I, I looked at lock in just because of Adamo, who's like mm -hmm. big in the community and the I know that he did Bitcoin, like did so well on Bitcoin, and I, I was obviously picking up on it around that sort of time. But um, like, it's just interesting to me that I just feel like some of these could do even better if they weren't on the list. Like, I actually think Mog could be multiple billions if it wasn't on the Murad list. Like, weirdly, <laughs> um, where it so some of those got like carried by being on that list, and some of them I think are now starting to be slightly handcuffed by it. But I'm look, for, I'm looking for that. I'm still looking for like new things. Like I played that Lu Luce one the other day. Oh yep. Um, because I felt like I'd never, I, apart from smoking chicken fish, which was like, kind of a like a funny religious thing. I hadn't seen, literally, the Pope come out with, some uh, with like a meme character that looks like a milady. It just felt like I haven't seen anything like that before. Like this isn't just some random um, animal. Um, that one might. Mendo, keep can you going. show Mando where you sold Lucy? By the way uh no i well <laughs> i sold i bought this thing at like 20 mil and then i sold it for like 35 i'm like oh this is a clean like two, Ooh. 50 that was day one yeah day one uh yeah tough one there tough one there um yeah i'll see if i can look at this um fuck dude. anyways uh what were we talking about <laughs> my strategy is i i kind of i'm buying the bags of there's two real classes of traders, really, right? Like there's classes of traders that are looking for sub million dollar meme coins at the moment, and they have like asymmetric returns. So like, but they're often not huge. Yeah, like some of them, some of them, they hold on for a while, but often like you you watch those streams with like Frank and stuff, yep. they're getting out at a million, right? Like they're running up, they're trying to make like 20, 50, 100 sol a day. I, I guess I'm it's trying to make less. a list. Like they don't make, and they, they take losses, like consistent losses. I've been yeah. in the, like trying to trade in the trenches the last like week and a half. And you lose, unless you have an inherent advantage of skill, of wallet tracking, of doing it like, and, and you're well connected as far as information goes, you lose pretty consistently. 
Uh, yeah. Like I did well on election day, but I gave all of those gains away the next day, just buying dumb shit. Sometimes the trenches literally have no momentum and you're reliant on like finding the winner of the day versus what you're doing is like kind of doing the filtering of like, okay, let me look at like past 1 million because you get rid of a lot of the bullshit, right? It's a lot different you, type of bet. What you just said is if you're going to do that, you have to have a real acclimatization with losses. Like you are probably going to lose on 70% of your trades, maybe even more. And some of them, like they will not cook and you'll have to debate whether you want to keep it or throw it into a new trade. And and sometimes, you know, they, they won't cook for a few days. So sometimes like it's like even more frustrating that like a coin that you've sold dies and then comes back and goes to like 20 million a few days later, you know? Um, I'm generally looking at the winner of the day and being like, is this going to be a trade that goes to 100 and if so, I can put in decent size into that and run out that way. So my, I would say the, my number of losses is less. That being said, like when they're losses, they can be much more in terms of like actual absolute figures. But you're like, you're probably looking at more like a 50-50 sort of run than a 70% losses. But, but now if you catch one of those up to 100 or 200 or 500, you can make quite a lot for it, um, like real, real money in it. Yeah. The guys who are like, oh, you know, that guy held all the way from it being at like 100K or like 10K. There's only very few of those that keep it that long. I guess you can play the 100, the, the 1 to 100 move, but you need to have a really high filter on have you seen this before? Like, is this actually genuinely useful? Um, I, I think, it, to be honest, just to be a little bit more critical, I, I think it goes beyond just like, is this a phrase I've not seen before? It's got to be like, I have not seen another coin that has this sort of a meta. And you'll know it pretty soon because within the next day, you'll see three or four other coins trying to do that meta, right? You'll be like, or even within okay. the next few hours, right? Like you'll see a yeah, bunch. Exactly, yeah. Once something breaks like two, 300K market cap, they'll try to run that. And if yeah. that main one runs, then it, that's where I'm like, okay, this has staying power. I'm definitely on the more like, I like to find the coin on pump fun and dump mm -hmm. it at 150, 200K. Like, <laughs> That's what I like. That's that's yeah. my kind of aggressive trading. And I have to like really focus on not <clears throat> putting more than five soul a day into that wallet because there's many days that thing goes to zero. But there's many days that you run that up pretty substantially when the market's really hot. But then it becomes like, so for you more, like when you say swing trades and you're talking about some of these moves that you've made, how long are those trades usually held? Like, are you talking days, weeks, months? Or are you talking like you have set price targets and when it gets there, it gets there? I I'm pretty certain that I'll keep Mudang and goat now until at least the year end so i normally oh, hold okay. them one or two months at a time um let's say two months i'll look at like can this be a bit of a meta and i just feel like right now um they both have okay first movers in both of those like peanuts been a bit of a runner versus Mudang over the last couple of days but the tiktok meme like viral viral animal stuff i think i think it's kind of got it on lock at the moment Mudang. Um, and then go, I think is go, I actually think can go to multiple billions. Like I genuinely do because I think it's, it's got a claim. I'm a big, big believer in like AI agents coming in and, and the idea of intersection of AI and, and crypto. And instead of you going to chat GPT and, and just asking it questions, you'll be able to say with a similar sort of interface, Hey, could you send money to these sort of people? Could you, could you do a trading bot for me with this much volatility? Could you, I want to make this much returns. Like here's the money, like go do it for me. I think we're about to see that it like mm -hmm. go massive in crypto. Um, and I, I think that there's a very good case here for GOAT being called like first, the first AI money, even if that is a LARP, even if we all know it's not perfect and it wasn't like the, it wasn't actually created by the AI. I just feel like it's got that enough momentum about it. So yeah, I think, I think it can keep going. Um, so I think that one, I, I think can, I can hold for a while, but Mudang, I think is more like a, I have a view which I kind of shared with you before the show that we'll we might peak around the inauguration. So I'm definitely going to be looking at stuff early Jan um, again and being like, okay, this this may be a mini top. And within like right the last couple of months, we've seen a pretty big change uh, in the meme coin environment. It's taken on a little bit more of like a risk on like FOMO, where you're seeing these 
tokens run so fast in such little time. We saw Luce, we saw Peanut run to like 50, 100 mil in literally less than 36 hours and then seeing these massive pullbacks. What do you like what do you make in this current meme coin landscape? I like obviously you were you were uh in pump fun early, you were kind of in the meme coin ecosystem now. Uh like what do you make of the state of where we're at right now within the meme coin kind of ecosystem and like I guess how are you trying to play that if at all you seem like a lot more of a patient like i'll just kind of wait to see find the play and if it's not there it's not there yeah so i'll always look at stuff from a risk reward basis like how much can i possibly lose on this trade and um and is it going to die or and if it does, isn't going to die like what what's the upside if if this if it, this goes right i do think you have to be just accepting of of the trenches at the moment like there's going to be thousands of new coins each day you're in any coin any any meme coin chat, they're always like, "Oh, this guy set, sold to buy X new token." You know what a loser! Like I, I've been in so many chats where you just see that, like, "Oh, you know, oh, they bought Luce or they've bought Peanut." Like I can't believe they've done that. There's going to be always new coins. I think you've got to, and this is something we can talk about with Epic as well. Is I think you've really got to have a niche. Yeah. You've got to be like, okay, they might sell, but someone's always going to want to buy it because it's always got like a bit of a this is a unique narrative. Um, so in some ways, like that's why I'm, I agree with some of what Murad was saying about like the cults and stuff. Um, but I also don't think that like, oh, just a cabal in it is, is like enough. I think it's got to be more than that. It's got to be right. This is kind of unique. This is the only person who's done this or like, this is easily the first mover or biggest coin yeah. in to do that. And, um, so I think you've got to accept that there's always you're always going to see these wicks down, um, which can be really horrific, particularly when there's le like leverage. Like um, if you're reading this and you're like, oh, I actually do like Mooding, you can go like Mooding. They do 1.3 billion dollars of perps a day, which means that there is going to be some disgusting down wicks on those days, and that's the same for a lot of different coins, right? Because the perp listings have become much bigger. So I think you're always going to get good entry. I don't think you necessarily need to chase some of like the more swing trades you can normally you can sometimes kind of pick your entries in them um like you could have bought most of the coins that i like right now down 40 percent, 50 percent a few days ago <laughs> and i know trump's a big bit of that but like i'm telling you there'll be one more thing there'll be a few more things over the course of the next couple of months where oh yeah we're all going lower for a little bit like um so yeah I, i'm accepting that it's, it's like hard attrition but generally i'll look for something that nobody else has really done and I'm I'm personally of the view that the the, the Murad memes, although the easiest and have will probably have the like more steady upward trend, they're not going to be the biggest runners, I think, um, into year end. You touched on a couple things there. Uh speaking of Murad, speaking of uh trying something new. I, I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about Epic. I was looking at the chart just now. Look at this. I mean, we one of the things that Murad looks for right, is several 50% drawdowns, right? We yep. went from 40 mil here. This thing launched during NFT NYC of uh, 2024. Exactly. Got up to 40 mil, then back down to five. Back up to 40 mil, back down to eight. And then- Higher more, lows, baby. Higher yeah, lows. More recently, got up to 30 mil, back down to nine. And now it's up 2X from the lows more recently. Uh, and then this week, you guys announced a partnership and kind of a shift in the narrative, getting into like the uh, gaming, uh, the gaming coin a little bit. And you announced a partnership with some, I think it was like a Solana gaming thing. Uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is interesting. I'll pull that up in a second. Like, I'm just curious for you, Mando, like you've been at this, you've been a meme coin founder for, uh, what is it? Like seven, eight months. I'm curious what the journey has been like. And if you can kind of shed some light on what, what it's been like kind of being uh, behind Epic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this was a coin I created on a live stream just like this, like we were just chatting and this was early days pump fun. Like there would be a few hundred coins a day, not 15,000. Right. And, uh, I remember it was around the time that like PopCat was starting to move up and we would, everyone was like, oh, Cats is going to be the next big thing. And me and KBM, who's now the trader in the space, were like, well, you know, why don't we do new animals? And I was like, oh, do you remember the Epic Duck? And he was, because he's a bit of a gamer, but this was like a Roblox meme. But it was a Roblox meme from 2009. Like it's a very old meme that I remember coming <laughs> back like in 2020. When, um, 
And I was like, oh, I wonder if anyone's done a duck. I searched it on Pump Fund. No one had done it. And then I just literally just typed in. I don't know if you ever created a coin. I know, I know Nick does it every week. But We've the, watched um... him do it. We've watched <laughs> him do it. So we're familiar with the process. Um, me and Clemente have yeah. not dove in and pressed the oh, buttons sure, ourselves. Sure. No alts. No alt ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> no one's done that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, the uh, epic, I just typed in to epic duck, put the duck meme and was like, on a live show, I was like, oh, let's just do this. Let's see what happens. And it, it, everyone on the show like make, made bank, right? Yeah, they, Who was watching it just came in and bought it. It went up to like 40, we went up to 25. Then in the first day, it went to 25 and then back then to like zero um, or like one. And I remember at that time, it was just after the whole period of, of, um, of like, uh, what do they call them? Where you take funds up up front, like where Matchy took like 30. Matter. Like pre-sales, pre-sale yeah. Matter. Remember there was that whole pre-sale matter. And even before that, like, if you were a meme coin dev in crypto, it was like, you are, like, filth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yep. think about what you thought about who was a meme coin dev, like, 12 months ago. It was, like, this shady character that's, like, um, part of some sort of cabal, and you, you you never really knew what they were. Um, you just felt, like, dirty ever, ever hearing about it. So when I launched it, it was still under that sort of guise. Like, people would be, like... If you're any attached to any sort of meme coin, they're like, you're a scammer, you're the worst. So when this thing went up and then down, they were like, you made so much money out of all of this. And I would burned all of the coins that I'd d- done already, right? Um, and then even then, I then had to start buying them from the people that were on that stream. That was, I was like, guys, this is, my re- reputation is at stake here. I need to start buying this, th- this thing to like help prop it up from anyone who's on those streams. Um, so like I'm definitely net down on on Epic as a as a an investment at least uh, you know I now own about five percent of the supply two percent with the market maker but the um yeah that was that was me you know I need I knew I had to make something of it like straight away or like my reputation albeit not taking any funds up front and all my friends making money out of it uh, I knew I was going to be the one who took the shit for it you're the so, fall guy you're the fall guy. Right. Poor guy, very public, and you really do realize that everyone's. You make one mi- misstep here, everyone's just like, yeah, 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 fuck you. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna have that happen. I'm not gonna get cancelled. I um, and then we've made like a thing out of it. Like uh, it's been a prop, like you just said. That's a, that's a real diehard community. That thing's gone down to zero or close to it a few times, um, and now you know we are like building it up r- around that sort of because we have that seven months. All the things from you, Ed, right? Seven, we're over six months old. We've had multiple drawdowns of over 60%. Um, and one thing that became really clear to me around that time was that we need to, to really go back to the roots of it. Like we're a gaming meme. Like we're, we're originally a gaming meme. If you're in gaming at all, like memes are everywhere and no one else had done it. So I was like, right, well, we, we are the first gaming like meme coin essentially. And we're going to, the other thing is that everyone in gaming, if you've ever, if you're a, you know, a traditional gamer, or even if you've been in Web3 gaming, you've been destroyed investing in Web3 gaming, right? How many times has everyone been like, this is going to be the next big thing, and then you just get dumped on for three years, and it's some, either the tokenomics or it's the VCs or the game never, t- takes o- um, never takes off. So everyone's had a, this horrific experience investing in Web3 gaming, and I was like, right, we're going to build a coin up from the ground here as like a gaming meme coin, and... We're gonna we're gonna get um, partnerships with a bunch of different games, but there's not gonna be any of that tokenomics. So like we'll get yeah. we'll get a partnership with with X game. They'll give us free stuff for like oh for, for some exposure, but we're not gonna have anything more than um than than that. And then uh, this so then we've been building it up around that. So it's got this like unique cult mission about it now to be the first gaming meme coin. Um, which has not been like the biggest meta, but I feel like it's gonna come. Like gaming will come to this space, and then people will be like, "Wow, okay, actually, that was that was the uh, the first the first kind of one to try and do that." And I think that's pretty a pretty strong place to be in uh, because it's already got all the other fe- features of the um, the Murad stuff. You saw a little bit with off um, off the grid like recently that people got super bullish on gaming coming back, uh, but but it, it's not yet really like off the grid has done well, but it's not knocked it out of the park yet um yeah. Mm-hmm. but yeah i think we're a fun space and that thing with solana was so very similar to the saga phones i don't know if you remember yeah they did the similar model right like airdrops alongside mu was the big one for them 
So that's how Mew got to 500 million because if they did an airdrop for like 200,000 phones. Um, so we're going to do an airdrop alongside them. Uh, it's going to be Epic is now going to be accepted in all the games on, on the console. That. They're building out their own marketplace and, um, and it's going to be accepted there. And then it's going to be 10% of any of the sales from these units um, will be used to buy back Epic. So oh, that's cool. I'm fascinated by this because uh, a couple things, and this is not, not as much related to trading, just in general of like the meme coins and building kind of cults. You've done this same playbook twice, right? So what's interesting here is basically you, you're, you're, you're able to kind of productize uh, a, a community and, and create a product that like they're aligned in and there is kind of success, uh, unified success, right? I see a bunch of people saying like, oh, I'm an Epic holder I just bought. Yeah. Literally last week, Wrecked Drinks was launched. For people that don't know, this is uh, Wrecked Guy is a kind of brand and uh, you guys have Wrecked Drinks. You sold 222,000 cans in less than 48 hours. Insane. Uh, but that is a similar style, right? Where you're like able to create products or not monetize to a certain extent, uh, but create a product that the community really enjoys. And there's a kind of unified uh, mission behind it. Uh, where the community is also involved in it. I'm like, you, you're pretty much one of the few people, you and OSF, uh, that understand that and have been able to like create that in a really smart way. Uh, I don't know what, what your thought process is and if kind of Epic Duck, you had that kind of similar uh, strategy behind it. Yeah, so Ep Epic, to be honest, has been less of like a, like I never really thought of it as a business. For me, like, as I just told you, I went into it to protect my reputation in this space. Like I do so many other things that is more like, revenue adjacent that i wanted to make sure this was a success I, I still want to like i've told you i own some of the supply but i'm not sitting here going like um i'm gonna i'm gonna take a, make a look uh, money from it for me it's more like right i want i want them to get free stuff from other people doing stuff in gaming but you did touch upon something there which i do think is a super smart strategy like we me and obi were talking about it a lot when solana did their phone right like the idea of an airdrop for consumer products um is actually quite a interesting concept um and is one that you can do quite well so we're doing a points program right now for the rec drinks you obviously got some points for doing that like who knows where that leads but um you could you could attach it to the well I've, we, like we've just said there's fifteen thousand meme co new meme coins made a day they're looking for marketing just as much as you are right i just jumped at this opportunity from place lana because they were doing the same run and i'm i was able to create a lot of you know uh, interest in it and there's b benefits for everyone there so i actually think there's gonna be a few different people who try this pudgy penguins kind of went down this route but haven't really fully attached anything to the the sale of the consumer products but like if you guys said tomorrow hey we're gonna we're gonna start selling mustache comas you know um and you start attaching uh start attaching meme coins to them i think they you know they would sell guys <laughs> The, the OG was um, Gary V selling his book and in a best selling author, best selling author for an NFT, man. That's it. PO still has 146 of them. Still has, yeah, got a storage unit full. I think you, there's a rinse and repeat mode because there's so many new meme coins, right? And they will pay for themselves most likely. Like these people are looking for marketing too. So I think with the book thing, it was always like uh, that had to keep on being pretty centralized, but. No, you could do you could do runs, you know, like you do season one with these attached to it, season two with these attached to it. That's what Solana's done with its phone. And I think you're gonna see a lot of that sort of stuff. So that's something that Rex has slightly touched in it. And that's yeah, that's Ovi's crushed it with that. Um yeah. obviously uh, uh, it's it's like I've got a whole community behind it as well. That's more like an NFT community to come coming into doing cool stuff. We gave everyone equity in that. Uh that was a free man as well. Free everything's been free. Uh, but but now it's now everyone shares in the upside of that brand doing well. Yeah. Um, I'm like fascinated by this because in the future, I literally think uh, I'm imagining like, you know, years down the line, Nike dropping like a Pepe shoe where they literally go, we're going to buy up 1% of the supply of Pepe or whatever meme coin. And each shoe you buy has, yeah. and they get to tap into literally a hundred thousand holders. And yeah. They get to tap in this community. It's massive marketing for them. Uh, and you're seeing the initial parts of that right now with what you guys did. Uh, easy. Yeah. I know we need to wrap here shortly. Any any closing questions you had? 
No, nothing major. It's awesome to just see. It's been fascinating to pick your brain about like the culture creation of a meme coin and just like that coming to fruition and what you've done and where it's going. I want to also give you an opportunity to leave any closing thoughts. You've had an incredible run and incredible history in NFTs, meme coins. It's fascinating to hear how you kind of trade it, that million plus market cap. And I think a lot of people can learn from that instead of chasing the 10K to 100K, which is the most competitive PVP style right now versus more of this like conviction, belief, bigger swings, longer timeline. So it's been awesome to pick your brain, Mando. And did you have any closing thoughts for the audience before we wrap? No, no, n- nothing major. Like, um, I think I'm looking forward to seeing where the show goes. I think you're bringing on some diverse people. I know you had Orangey on here, which is, I follow him for the, the like the sub one, 1 million stuff. I think you've got to have your, your follows around that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I talk about this stuff, but you can follow me to see those sort of views. I also have a, a newsletter called Mando Minutes, you can, um, which kind of goes into a lot of the left curve stuff uh, alongside macro crypto stuff. So you can follow that. That goes out every single day um, if you want if you want to be kept updated that way. No, absolutely. Give them a follow as well at at Rekt Mando, R-E-K-T-M-A-N-D-O. Absolute pleasure having you, Mando. We appreciate it a ton. Go subscribe to his newsletter. I read it every single day. I'm a big fan of it as well. It's awesome to just pick the brains and get insight from people who are active in the markets day in and day out. It means a ton as well for you taking the time today. But that's going to do it for the third episode of the Super Cycle Show. We're going to be back again with more guests, more heavy hitters. If there's anyone you want to see on the show, let us know below. We appreciate you as always, and we will catch you next time.